911. What is the location of your emergency? Take a deep breath for me, okay? Help us on the way. One Charles 35, I copy. Units to start code 3 to one Charles 35, Sergeant to copy. Papers for you. You're listening to the Raspy Dispatcher. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Raspy Dispatcher. Part 2 of the examinee study guide that is presented by POST to help you prepare for your POST dispatch test um, in order to move on in the process of becoming a dispatcher. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Like, subscribe, tell a friend if you're enjoying these videos, and uh, let's go. So here we go. So this is part two of a two-part video in regards to the examinee study guide. So if you haven't seen the first video, make sure to check that out as well. Could answer some questions you might be having. Um, if you're still having some questions, go ahead and feel free to leave a comment. I do my best to try and respond in a timely manner. So here we go. Text, test format examples which are provided in the examinee guide by POST to help you prepare for your exam. So after reading these over, they're not all necessarily test question examples. Some of them are actually examples of the testing format and what you should expect to see on the test rather than each test having an example like a question and an answer. Some just genuinely showing you the format of what to expect. So again, POST is looking to measure your verbal ability, your reasoning, your memory, and your perceptual ability. If you want to dive a little more into what those are, watch part one of this series and then um, it'll give you the full explanation of what those are. But for this video, we're going to go ahead and move right along and start diving into the test format and test questions. All right, so the first question is or format is public safety bulletin. So the examinee is given three minutes to study a one page shift bulletin. They're given three minutes to study a one page shift bulletin. The bulletin contains descriptions of several different events. After the study period has ended, the examinee will answer multiple choice questions regarding facts and details about the events based solely on your memory. So a possible sample question pulled from what an applicant studied could be the suspect was described as A, 30 to 35 years old, B, 6 foot 2 inches tall, C, short with a mustache, or D, a white male. So you'll have three minutes to study a bulletin uh, with a bunch of information and the format or a test question that could be pulled from that information is the suspect is described as. Next, assigning field units. The examinee reads a novel set of rules and then determines which field unit or units should be assigned to various incidents. The incident occur in different geographic regions and are designated as emergency and non-emergency. The examinee uses multiple choice response format to designate no one or more units to be dispatched to each incident. So this is very, 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 very close to what it's like dispatching a radio channel. You have units for the area that you're, area you're in control of, and you have rules to send those units to certain places based on priority, based on situation, based on circumstance. So each agency has their own different set of dispatching protocol, but this is very similar to what you'll have to do 
if you do end up becoming a dispatcher. So um, they do give a test example, as you can see here. There are three field units, A, B, and C. Each unit is designated to cover one or more areas as follows. Unit A, North and West. Unit B, South. Unit C, East. Rules for assigning the field units to incidents are given below. Units are to be assigned only to the areas in which they are designated, except as noted below. Units are to be assigned to a call only if they are currently available. All available units are to be assigned to an emergency call. Now assign the appropriate field unit or units to each example incident below. In doing so, consider the above rules along with the area, type of call, and current assignments of the field units. Mark on your answer sheet the letters corresponding to all units that you assign to each incident. If an incident requires more than one unit to be assigned, you are to mark more than one letter on your answer sheet for that item. When no units are to be assigned, mark the space labeled N on your answer sheet for that item. Incident 1. Area, South. Type of call, non-emergency. Current assignments, Unit A is available. Unit B is available. Unit C is available. The correct answer is Unit B because they are available and their assignment area is the South area. Incident number two, area, east, type of call, an emergency, current assignments, unit A is assigned to a non-emergency, unit B is available, and unit C is available. The correct answer here is sending both unit B and unit C because they are both available and this is an emergency call requiring two units to be sent. And there are only two units available because unit A is currently on a non-emergency assignment. The third section, evaluating facts. The examine, examinee reads a set of public safety related facts and then determines whether conclusions that follow are true or false or cannot be determined on the basis of the facts provided. And here's an example of that, of that section given by post. Facts. All crimes are to be recorded in the criminal activity log. Some vehicle accidents are crimes. Supervisors are to be notified of all crimes. Conclusions. Number one. Some vehicle accidents are to be recorded in the criminal activity log. This is true. Number two, supervisors are to be notified of all vehicle accidents. This is false. Only some vehicle accidents are crimes. Therefore, supervisors only need to be notified. Therefore, supervisors only need to be notified if the vehicle accident that you are reporting is actually a crime. Next section, setting priorities. The test taker is given a novel set of rules to read and follow in order to assign priority codes to events. The events are presented in sets of three. A multiple choice response format is used to designate the priority of events to each first, second, and third priority. Here's an example. Example rules for assigning priorities. Events are to be prioritized as follows. Code A, highest priority. These are events that involve injury or are life-threatening. Code B, second priority. Events that involve property loss or damage. And code C, the lowest priority. Other events that do not involve injury, threat to light, property loss, or damage. Example set of events. Set number one. Number one, a man is breaking into an, 
an unoccupied house. This is considered code B. Number two, two neighbors are currently involved in a fist fight. This is considered code A. Number three, a caller is requesting information about parking permits. This is code C. The next section, reading comprehension. The examinee will read a brief passage and then answer multiple choice questions regarding facts and details contained in the passage that they just read, as well as the meaning of the information that they read and how it is to be interpreted and conclusions that may be drawn after reading that passage. Example passage. Alzheimer's disease affects a person's short-term memory. The affected person may be able to easily recall information from years past, but may not recall current information, such as his or her address. Alzheimer's patients exhibit a variety of behaviors, which may be construed as violations of the law. With a little careful questioning, a dispatcher can gather enough information to determine if a person's behavior is a manifestation of his or her illness or a criminal act. An example test question, according to the above passage, a person with Alzheimer's disease, A, is likely to commit a crime, B, will have trouble remembering recent events, C, will have difficulty walking or lifting heavy objects, D, will have trouble remembering events that happened years ago. After reading the passage, you can determine that the correct answer is B. We'll have trouble remembering recent events. The next section is sentence clarity. The examinee will compare two versions of the same sentence and identify the one that is more clearly written. Sentence clarity. This examinee compares two versions of the same sentence and identifies the one that is more clearly written. Sentence A. The victim said that he was attacked by a man. He was riding a bicycle. Sentence B. The victim said he was riding a bicycle when he was attacked by a man. Out of the two sentence options, option B is more clear. Next section, recalling facts and details. So in this section, the examinee will listen. Again, they will listen to a simulated call for law enforcement service received by a public safety dispatcher. The examinee is not allowed to take notes and they will have to answer a multiple choice question regarding the various facts and details contained in the call based solely upon their memory. So you're going to be played a call for service, uh, a non-emergency or emergency call, as if um, you were the dispatcher receiving the call. And from memory, you're going to have to recall certain details from the call. Sample question. What is the name of the caller? A. Johnson. B. Smith. C. Alvarez. D. Chen. They don't give an actual answer, correct answer, because we, of course, cannot hear the audio that the examinee listened to. But this is an example of a question, a sample question that you may receive during this section of the post test. The next section is call taking. The examinee will listen to several simulated calls for service received by a dispatcher. You are allowed to take notes in this section during the calls, and you will be given a brief period to complete your notes after all calls have been presented. You are then allowed to use your notes to answer a series of multiple choice questions regarding facts and details pertaining to the calls that you heard. 
as well as interpretations and conclusions regarding the meaning of each call that was received or that you heard in this case. Sample question. Where is the caller now? A. At her home. B. At her office. C. At the corner of 10th Street and Mission Avenue. Or D. Across the street from the drugstore. Again, no correct response is given because we cannot hear the audio that you would hear during the actual post test. So this is a sample question you could receive during this section. Next section, oral directions. In this section, again, you're going to be listening to a simulated radio call from a patrol officer to a dispatcher. So the last few calls were actual 911 or non-emergency calls placed from a citizen to a dispatcher. In this section, you're going to be hearing radio traffic from an officer. What instructions are you supposed to give the field technician? A. Be on the lookout for a knife at the scene. B. Search the vehicle for illegal drugs. C. Wait for the detective before entering the crime scene. Or D. Forward all evidence to Sergeant Jones. Same as the last questions, no correct response is given. This is a sample question that you will receive, that you could receive during this portion of the testing. You are allowed to take notes in this section. You will be given a brief period to complete the notes after each radio traffic is presented. You then are allowed to use the notes that you took to answer multiple choice questions regarding what you heard and in the order in which they are performed. Various details contained in the call, such as names, times, locations, etc. And any interpretations and conclusions that may be drawn from the radio traffic that you heard. Checking coded information is the next section. In this section, the examinee will be presented a series of random letters and number letter number codes. And those codes are going to range from two to four alpha numeric characters. As each code is presented, the examinee will refer to a code sheet. And that identifies and marks the same code among the five written alternatives. Go ahead and take a look at this code sheet. Take a look at the alternative codes provided. The directions are as follows. If the first code you hear is F5, that's Frank 5, then you should circle or mark F5 for the item 1 on your code sheet. If the second code you hear is J1, that's John 1, then you should circle or mark John 1 for item 2 on your code sheet. If the third code you hear is 3B, that's 3B as in boy, you should circle or mark 3B for item 3 on your code sheet. The information will be presented slowly at first and it will increase in speed until the task becomes very difficult. After the information is presented, the examinee transfers his or her answers to the answer sheet to be turned in. So again, remember, Post went on to say that if don't feel frustrated if you feel like you can't keep up because some sections of the test are designed that way. And it sounds like this is one of the sections that's designed that way. So don't get frustrated if you feel like it's going too fast. And the next and final section, checking and listening. They're going to have the examinee perform two tasks at the same time. Task number one is going to be to compare a list of names, addresses, and license numbers with a hot sheet and identify as many matches as possible. Task number two is going to be to listen to simulated radio broadcast from several field units and record the unit status transmissions on a radio log. So again, you're going to be doing both these things 
at the same time. After the simulated, simulated radio broadcast had ended, the examinee is just instructed to stop the hot sheet comparison and answer a series of multiple choice questions regarding the various status broadcasts of each unit. So while you are doing the hot seat portion, they're gonna be playing the audio transmissions. They're gonna have you stop the hot seat portion, hot seat, hot sheet portion, and then answer questions from the audio transmissions you heard while conducting the hot Part one, hot sheet comparison. Indicate whether or not each item below matches the hot sheet. One, one, boy, Charles, David, seven, three, two. Number two, Acosta, Charles. Number three, Acosta, Cheryl. Part two, unit status questions. Refer to your radio log as needed to answer the following questions. 1. What was the first status reported by Unit Charles? A. 1. B. 2. C. 3. D. 4. E. 5. Again, the correct responses are not given because we are not hearing what you would hear during a post-test, but this is the sample question you could receive during this section. So. Those are their 11 sections. Those are the examples that were given by post to help you understand what you're getting into when you show up to take your post exam. So I hope that this video was helpful. Again, the link to the examinee guide provided by post is going to be in the bio. So make sure to check that out, print it out, read it over yourself. Um, all the information given in these videos is from that. So um, hopefully you find it helpful when moving on to take your post test. If you have any questions, comments, please make sure to leave them in the comment section. I do do my best to answer them in a timely manner. Um, again, if you're enjoying these videos, like, subscribe, tell a friend. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you next time.